I'm glad for fully admit that you enjoyed the dating stream. I think the dating stream was pretty fun. Hopefully people won't be cringe about it because Rachel and Blur are my friends and they came on and the vibes were good. And also it takes a vulnerability from them to open up about that kind of stuff. It's generally pretty private. And after that, I went to the game with the boy, with, you know, Mang, Lud, Shake, Yingo. We went to the Lakers game which may be first Lakers game I've been to in person since I became a born again, die hard Lakers fan. And the game was great. That was a really fun fucking game. I thought for sure they were gonna lose in the last second. I thought when Giannis had the ball six seconds left, only needed to fake and drive, I think it would be over. But he did, they clutched it and it was hype. We were pogging. Do you go hard in the paint? I will say Mango does. I'll admit that I'm a lightweight, but the second I get there to the bar outside the game, Mango goes, let's do two Jaeger bombs. So we instantly do two. I haven't even eaten yet. I'm hungry as shit. Then we start getting these fucking gigantic beers. And so I was doing them and I got drunk pretty fast because we hadn't eaten. Obviously, being the intelligent, business-minded individual I, I am, I decided to do a little bit of recon. And I went to the nearest Wetzel's Pretzels in the stadium and bought myself two fucking honking double deluxe pretzels, which is what I ate. <laughs> We saw LeBron, LeBron didn't even play, which is a little bit disappointing for me, because you know, you go to a Lakers game, you want to see LeBron James play, but his ankles busted. So he just sat on the sidelines and laughed and made a meme, I guess. It's like two women, like <laughs> on International Women's Day, just grabbing LeBron's arm and laughing at his jokes. Pretty sure he's married. <laughs> anyway, so we watched that, it was fun. And then we went back to the warehouse for a night of debauchery drinking because everyone there wanted to practice for Birio Kart. And I thought that meant they were gonna practice Mario Kart, but they didn't. They just practiced drinking. <laughs> they barely even played Mario Kart, bro. You know, we were just sitting around drinking, which is very fun, I guess, good time. And then, you know, as always seems to happen, I mean, it's like since I first known him like if you go back to 2019 or something like when i first met lud we end up in a corner of the venue playing fucking high stakes fox ditto money matches <laughs> We drank a whole fucking bunch. They stopped playing Mario Kart. And then we're sitting in the corner playing a $100 game Fox Dittos on a melee, on a CRT in the corner. And we keep double or nothing until it's like $400 a game. Whenever he loses, he starts screaming at me. And whenever I lose, I start smashing Aiden's desk. Oh, by the way, wait, I gotta say something. I hate to put him on blast, but we showed up at the warehouse late at night after the Lakers game and we go inside and there's someone in there <laughs> again no one should be there it's like late at night on a Friday I go inside and it's fucking Aiden sitting alone upstairs in the warehouse grinding melee by himself on Slippy and screaming in rage <laughs> in the dark he has a home he has his own fucking place he's sitting there in the dark in this warehouse by himself playing melee and literally we all get there like i'm like oh what up aiden give him a hug you know say, say what's going on he sits down and he just starts fucking <laughs> just screaming it's so funny he's such a nice guy but he rages so hard and he can't control it when there's company around that's the thing most people can most people are ragers, but when people are around, they'll pretend like, oh, you know, I'm just having a good time. He can't control. He actually rages really hard. Melee is also my rage game. For many, many years, I played Melee only in person, and I thought it was the greatest gentleman's game. You meet people, everyone's nice in person, you shake hands, you say GG's, and then they added online play. And whenever I started to play online Melee, I've never raged hard. I, every opponent that beats me is scum of the earth Ari can attest the only game i ever rage at is melee it's what i smash my desk me with chess yeah so people have told me it's like chess i play chess usually on my phone on the toilet <laughs> i guess here's why i don't rage at chess it is because i have never escaped a single narrow band of elo points for five years <laughs> If I ever win, I know for a fact I will lose till I go back down. And if I ever lose, I know for a fact I will win till I come back up. So there's no stakes for me. I, I don't feel any pressure. I'm not trying to get somewhere. Whenever I play chess, I'm not trying to improve. I'm not trying to learn. I don't study my losses. I just do what I like to do. I try to get aggressive. I try to make a play on the king. If I don't get a checkmate, usually I'll fucking have lost the piece. That's why you suck. See, I don't think I suck. I think 1200 is well above uh, average. What's the average? What's the percentage? Player rating percentiles okay so if i'm 1200 that means i'm in the top 34 percent. that's great <laughs> i haven't tried once i haven't studied once i haven't done a lesson once that's grass all i want to be the beautiful part of where i'm at in chess is that if there's somebody casual i pretty much always win and if there's somebody that's good at it 
I just say you're a tryhard. <laughs> I have the ultimate chess maxing. If I ever play a casual, I always win and I look good. And if I ever play somebody that's like really grinding at chess, I go, all right, lame. <laughs> so I really, I don't get salty at chess, but melee is different because I have melee, I have a goal. And that's what Aiden was having a problem with. Aiden is like, he cares about every ranking point. And so like, if he wins one game and gets seven points, and loses a game and loses nine points, he freaks out about that two point difference. He's sitting there on the computer, all his friends around whining, complaining. Oh, it's so unfair. It's so unfair. I lose, I win seven, I lose nine. Just like disgusted. It's the funniest aspect of his personality because if you met Aiden like outside of gaming ever, like if you met him at a coffee shop or in college, or you would just think this guy's a well-adjusted, normal, nice guy, really nice guy. Very Canadian, you know, just a good positive attitude. And then if you see him play melee, it's, it's just like hunched over in the dark, yelling at nobody. Unlike League, if you lose in melee, it's 100% on you. I've learned over the years of playing many, many competitive 1v1 games. No matter how skill-based the game is, no matter how much it is your fault when you lose, people will invent a reason. <laughs> if you play StarCraft, you will notice that people, despite that game being you know, one of the best balanced games of all time, 10 years of history, high level esports, a loss is definitely your fault. People would always blame, oh, cheesy strategy. Oh, whatever race you're playing. Oh, Zerg, OP. Oh, Protoss, OP. Oh, Terran, OP. They'll, they'll just always blame something. There's just no way they can take full responsibility. And that, that applies to chess too. People will say in chess, people will say, oh, you're just, you're a cheesy player. Oh, you brought your queen, fucking cheese. Oh, you're opening so cheese. That's why you always play a lower tier and have the excuse your character sucks. I hate this. I hate this. This is option select. You know, in Smash Bros, a character like Luigi is not very good. He's not a very good character. So if you play Luigi, you have what's called the low tier option select, which is if you lose, ah, Luigi sucks, not my fault. <laughs> and if you win, oh, I'm a god. I beat with Luigi. You're so trash. I played Luigi. You played a good character. I beat you. You're so trash. It's so annoying to play against because you as another player cannot win. You can never feel good about your win and they will always option select you. It's a fucked up mental game that people will play to protect their ego. Oh, this was great. There's a player in StarCraft 1. StarCraft 1, the most in-depth skill-based esport of all time. Incredibly, incredibly, incredibly difficult. Pure 1v1, incredible mechanics, break your hands, strategic geniuses, okay? And the greatest player of all time was Flash undisputed the go and when he was about to retire he had to retire because they were going to pull him into the korean military everyone's required all all korean men are required to do two years of military service so flash had to retire to go to the military and in his last season before he retired he showed up to tournaments and started playing random <laughs> In StarCraft, you could only pick three races, Terran, Protoss, or Zerg, and they're all very different. And nobody in the 20 year history of StarCraft 1 tournaments ever played random. I mean, it was like, it, was, it wasn't a thing in any major tournaments. No one ever gone far with it. If Flash is playing against a good Zerg player, that guy has been playing nothing but Zerg for 15 years. <laughs> Since he was a child, he's been in a bunk bed grinding fucking Zerg. This guy only knows Zerg. And so Flash would random something, he would random Zerg, and then beat this guy Zerg versus Zerg. Like it's insane, it was insane. It was a level of skill boggles the mind. Now he didn't win that tournament. He actually got, I think third. I mean, he was beating some of the best players in the world with their own race, which was, it was crazy. It was, it blew my mind. It's right, the chattest thing was Boxer. Yeah, so there was, I wanna show you this guy. I met this guy. Uh, back when I was a big uh, StarCraft head. This is Boxer, Slayer's Boxer. He was the first Korean StarCraft superstar. The first guy to get famous and like be on TV. And he had a self-published autobiography that sold like 500,000 copies. He's a fucking legend. And he was so famous in Korea that when he was forced to retire to go to the military, the military let him make an Air Force StarCraft team <laughs> so he could keep playing. So like when he had to quit pro leagues, he went to the military and they made the Air Force Ace StarCraft team and he got to recruit other players and he made a five man team and they got to enter tournaments. It was, it was incredible. And he would show up in like a flight suit to tournaments and play StarCraft. I wanna do like a video on some of the StarCraft stories because I think of all the esports, StarCraft has some of the most incredible stories Oh yeah, uh, spoiler alert. So Ludwig and I played for, I don't know, an hour plus of Melee, $100 money matches. I ended up plus 400 and he screamed. <laughs> screamed and threw the controller down. And that's actually extra huge for me because I lost 300 to him at Genesis betting on JMOOC. So 
Once DraftKings add Melee, you're fucked. It's actually a wise point. I think it's very easy for me to, I mean, I think it's just factual. I, I think I, I feel like I have to say it because I have an audience of people who are in like that 18 to 34 male range, mostly younger, who are like the prime target for gambling and gambling addiction. I feel like I have to say that it's bad, but like if Melee was on there, I would be way more tempted, way more tempted. I lost over 60K and I'm 22, don't do it. Bro, you guys should actually listen to this guy. <laughs> this is real. This shit's real, bro. Like, not a joke. Low key, the people should actually be careful with these gambling ads, bro. You, I mean, you look at the data and it's just bad. People are doing it more and more and more and more and more. The helplines keep getting more calls. It's bad, bro. You don't win. That makes me so mad because how the fuck do you have 60K to lose at 22? <laughs> maybe he won. Maybe he only had 100 bucks and he parlayed it up to 60K, then lost it all. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it was a boom and a bust.